Do you like fire? Then you're going to love annealing. For this video, I'm going to be focusing on annealing aluminum and copper. Uh, copper will be really similar to any other non-ferrous alloy like brass or bronze, and aluminum is its own special little creature. Um, with aluminum, when you're heating it up, it has a lower melting temperature, so you do have to watch about overheating it when you're annealing or softening it with heat. Uh, the best way to have an indication to see when it's at the right temperature is to just kind of scribble with a Sharpie, um, and the temperature at which the Sharpie ink burns off um, you'll know that it's fully annealed. Now I have run into that they have industrial strength uh, temperature resistant Sharpie. So you want to make sure you're not using those or else your aluminum will melt. So, um, so I've got that marked with the Sharpie. I have it on just a basic annealing pan, which is just pumice stones here. And uh, the torch that I'm using this is a Smith torch available from any basic jewelry supplier. I've had it for decades now. I love it, very reliable. It's a uh, acetylene air torch, which means there's a compressed tank of acetylene attached to it with the hose. And then it's pulling atmospheric air in through the inlets in the torch tip. Comes with a variety of different torch tips based on what you need. For annealing, I have a nice big one there. Um, so you open it slightly and then you wanna strike it, which either you can have kind of a manual striker or we have a little ba battery power striker so I've opened that torch get that going if you're not familiar with uh, torch tips the inner cone there is the hottest part of the torch flame so you want to make sure that that's not too close to the metal piece but not too far away that it takes forever to heat up but I'm just slowly working my way around making sure that I've burned off all of that sharpie if you spend too much time, your aluminum's gonna turn into a little wrinkled, puddled mess and be no good. So that's all it takes. Um, this is very hot, so uh, be sure that you're not touching it. I'm just using uh, copper tongs here that are typical in a jewelry or metalsmithing studio. But you can see that there might be a, a slight little shadow of that Sharpie mark, but the, the ink is uh, completely burned off. So that's softened and ready to use. Now I'll cover uh, annealing copper. Uh, copper does glow red as you're heating it up, so you don't need any other kind of temperature indicator. So again, I'll set it on that pumice annealing tray. Get the torch going. Just evenly heating the piece. And the nice thing with non-ferrous alloys is that they will stay softened until you begin to work on the piece again and harden it through moving the metal around. It's called work hardening it. So unlike steel, which needs to be worked red hot, uh, copper will stay softened, and other non-ferrous alloys will stay softened until uh, you continue to keep working on it. So I'm just working the torch around the metal, looking for a dull red glow. Um, copper's melting point is significantly higher than aluminum. So I don't need to worry as much about it melting. Uh, for those of you that are interested in metal spinning and thinking of working with pewter, uh, pewter actually works softens, so you don't need to anneal pewter at all. All right, so I'm getting kind of a dull red glow. I think you can kind of see that. I feel like this is some sort of strange cooking show here. That's all we need to heat it up to. And uh, if you quench it in water, it'll both remove some oxides from it as well as um, even leave it slightly softer. So quenching it in a bowl of water there, you can see that uh, it cools it instantly and also removes some of those oxides. The rest of these oxides, you can either remove manually by sanding them off or uh, if you do have a, a metal studio or jewelry studio and you're, or you're thinking of setting one up, uh, what's typically done is they're put in what's called a pickle, which is a mild acid solution specially formulated for removing the oxides from non-ferrous metals. Uh, typically works well warmed, uh, so you might see those in uh, little crock pots or something like that. So that's the, uh, the basics to annealing and softening your metals in preparing to work with them. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can hear from me when I post future videos.
Thanks for stopping by.